All right, now we're going to tuck the skin into the gap that we've created before on the um, MDF board. So in the corner, I like to start with the corners and uh, the gap is usually tight, the one, uh, the, the one that I make on the board. And uh, it would be easier just to use your fish knife and um, make sure that you're not pulling the skin too far in, into the back and then cut out the excess around the corners and whatnot and then with the, with your rubber mallet you just keep tapping to the knife and push that skin go into that gap very nice and tight just gotta take your time that's all I usually like to tap it in and then I know that where it needs to be cut and then I'll cut it after I always leave about a quarter inch um, extra skin so when I tap it in it really goes into the gap and it stays there sealed nice and tight So this back of the deer, as you see, I have uh, MDF board showing. It'll be covered with black felt, and um, it'll actually give it a very good finished look. Some some folks use leather, some folks use some uh, rock scenery on the back. I just like to use black felt. Now we're done with the back side and. Moving forward again to the nose and eyes and the front part of the mount. So we pull the skin off of the muzzle again to do the clay work. We could have done it before, but I like to do them when I'm doing the mouth and nose to work with the softest and freshest clay work. Otherwise, it could have been, you know, about an hour late or two hour late. In the the clay could have been stiffened up a little bit on me so I don't like that I like to work with a very fresh and soft clay so I can close the lips very nice and tight another uh, fine roll of clay applied to the upper lip edge and then feathered out the edges upward and around the corner downward so um, it, it looks fairly smooth by the time we're done. Yeah, if you notice, I keep spraying it with water. I don't like it to be dried. And um, another piece of clay, I press it hard to make it flat. And thin and flat and I apply it on the nose. In some animals I like to uh, apply that and make the nose quite look uh, look quite um, soft and uh, it creates a very nice nose actually. Just a thin layer I would say it's about an eighth of an inch. It's not very thick. Yeah, and I tried to create the proper nose shape right now, but I don't really get too crazy about it because the easier part is when you pull the skin over it and the shape of the skin, the color of the skin will help you sculpt it with pressing it down on the clay much easier. So I just try to create uh, an okay look even on the eyes too. I mean, I, I try to make my eyelids quite nice and close as, uh, as close as possible to what, what I want it to be. But I don't get 
too fussy about it because when we pull the skin over there is a chance for the skin to drag some of the clay back and forth I don't really mind that way and um, because I know that you know when I have the skin over the clay I can easily reshape it properly and um, in fact the, the last fine lines and the creases that I create on the clay around the eyes or around the lips or nose happens the next day when the clay has stiffened up a little bit after after mounting because if the clay is too soft then you try to leave an um, impression on it it doesn't it doesn't accept it you know clay just is too soft and with the pressure of the skin it's just gonna pop back out but when you come back next day whatever you press in for fine lines and the, and the eyelids and whatnot it will stay there so it works out pretty good anyway back to the work we are tucking in the upper lips right now I like to do a little bit from the front make sure that the nose is in center and then go to the corners and tuck in the corners and move my way forward. It might appear in the video that I'm putting a lot of pressure, but no, I'm not. I'm just trying to not to put a lot of pressure, so that's why I'm moving my body with it when I'm uh, pressing that um, lip tucker into, into the gap. Now uh, another small roll of clay comes to the front of the mouth for the lower lips and it creates the, the visual lip line that you see when the mount is finished. Yeah, we keep working on it until it all looks nice and smooth. All the extra skins are all tucked in so you don't see it. The creases around the corner of the mouth are worked out and uh, there's no crease left in there. So I'm shortening the video in, uh, in areas that you know what's gonna happen after or I just like I mean if, if a process is shown here and you can see what's the technique or what's the you know the way I do it once you see it I don't think really you need to sit down and watch 20 minutes of me finishing one job um, so that's why I, I edit the video and shorten it and make sure that it's not too long and not too large of a size for uploading and at the same time it's not too boring because once we are doing the work we're quite entertained and we're, we're busy working so we time will fly but when you're watching somebody else uh, somebody else working it can it can easily get boring so I try to just uh, skip forward through the boring areas or boring parts and show you the techniques and stuff that is worth knowing so one thing about these thin haired animals when we're um, putting the burr skin around the base of the horns uh, one way is to uh, crazy glue them make sure that underneath the skin is quite clean that there's not a lot of uh, height paste in there so it's basically you're dealing with two dry items like dry skin not, not wet and dry antler base and all I have to do 
is uh, open that gap a little bit with the crazy glue squeeze some in there not much it's crazy glue you don't need to do a lot as soon as you see you're putting some wet line of the glue on the skin you can easily um, stop and then and then with your spatula or with your um, tools just move the skin and press it down hold it for 10 seconds till the glue sets which is what I'm doing here The glue I'm using is just a medium um, crazy glue. It's not too thin and it's not too thick. It's fairly medium and uh, the brand I'm using is Gorilla. I've had good luck with it, so I keep using it and they last pretty long. Uh, the majority of the glues that I buy, they dry out, their nozzle is not very good and uh, I run into a lot of problems with them. And I know some people don't like Gorilla Crazy Glues, but I have nothing wrong to uh, to worry about. It works perfectly good for me. Okay, we are coming to an end for this type of video to this part of the video too. Oh, here is another way of resecuring the skin using the nailer, not the brad nailer, just the sorry, uh, the pinner. Use the pinner, a few around, it's so fine that you'll secure it for good. So, and here are the finished product. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next week for another video.